This is a demonstration of how I'd paint a white iris flower using watercolor markers uh, and I use the Aquamarker brand of watercolor markers and as usual I start with quite a small part of the picture and that's just to find my way into the picture to build my confidence and you can see I've already started using uh, sunburst yellow and a little bit of tangerine orange on the edge there and I'm just blending them using a brush and I'm using a synthetic brush which I always think is the best thing to use with watercolor markers it's a little bit of a stiffer brush and it's it's good to blend them and mix them on the paper which is what I like to do a lot of so after quite a small and simple start it's time to get into the base colors and for this I'm doing the, the petals and I'm using uh, wisteria here which is a sort of very very pale kind of um, purpley kind of marker and I'm also doing some of the, the dark edges on this with a, a darker gray called granite which is a kind of a blue gray uh, and I'm hoping that'll just give me the the kind of darker shadows that I need the base colors are exactly that there's nothing fancy I'm just laying down some base color on each of the petals and it'll help me start to see areas that are dark areas that are light um, and just start to look at ideas for depth before I even get into anything like details at all and usually what I do is I mix water in the light part the bit that I've left without any markers on and work my way down into the colors for this I'm working from the dark color upwards into the light areas because as you can see I've got to put a lot of these little tiny fine creases in these petals because it's quite a distinctive uh, petal for the iris flower so I'm trying to do that so I'm working from the dark colors into the light and into the kind of white paper highlights in order to show those kind of lines so as I move on to the next petal uh, I try and make sure that it is not directly adjacent to one that I've just painted uh, because obviously when you put you know two wet areas of paint next to each other they could run together, they could flood, they could bleed and I don't want that to happen um, sometimes it's a really cool effect but it's not something that I want here so I'm deliberately working on another petal that is quite separate from the one I've just done so here I've mixed the colors together but that's quite a hard edge there so I go to the water jar, I get some water in the brush and I bring it back in and then I sort of work along the edge of where that dark paint, that dark color was and I'm basically trying to make it um, you know, blend to grade out from a darker color into a lighter color and with this third petal here, uh, it's quite shadowed, this, this part of the petal, so I'm putting in a bit more of the granite than usual. And also there's a little bit of yellow there, because some of the yellow petals underneath uh, are kind of like uh, glowing through the white petals of the, the iris. So I get the water on the brush, and I get the size 4 round in here, and I'm just trying to blend all of those three colors together, the wisteria, the granite, and the yellow. But already I can see that even I've put a little dab of yellow on, it's way too much and it is really, really strong, way too strong. So I'm going to have to do something about that because that's too yellow. So I get clean water on the brush and I go in and I work from the top of that bit and I try and pick up some of that yellow and then fill in while it's still wet using the wisteria marker. But here I make a bit of a mistake. I then add water to the wisteria marker when I should have just left it because it was already running in with the yellow anyway. So here you can see me just adding some finishing touches to more kind of base layers, base colors on these particular petals uh, before I start worrying about any of the details. And from here I decide to fill in the underside of the yellow petal that I started with. And this is yellow with a bit of fern green and this um, part of the petal is in shadow. So if I'm going to achieve any kind of depth and make this petal look 3D, this bit has got to look a bit darker and this bit's got to look a bit more shadowy and shaded. Um, so I'm just using a dark green with the yellow so it's still going to appear to be yellow but the green gives it that darker edge and when it's all brushed and it's all blended in and it's finished a couple of little paper white highlights left in there as well then hopefully it's going to give that feeling that the petal is coming out curving over and, and this greenish part is the underside the underneath of that petal. So with some of the colors and some of the base colors put on here with the putting the marker straight on and then um, adding water technique, here's a slight change in technique where I'm actually mixing some color using the um, aqua markers on a palette. Uh, and I've switched to a much finer brush here for this second layer. Um, this is a very fine Cotman brush. I think it's classed as a triple one. I don't know what that means. It's lost a few hairs over the years, so it's probably even thinner than it was when I bought it. But this is, I'm using this to just put in some of these delicate kind of crease kind of lines and shadows using the um, the color that I've just mixed. And because it, it's a second layer and it's going on, it's going on a little bit darker. So I'm trying to show a bit of depth and detail now by using this second layer and a very, very fine brush to do it.
and I should mention at this point, it is a blend of the two colors that I've previously used. So it's a blend of wisteria and granite. No other colors in here at all. It's the same two colors I've already used, but blended together uh, and then applied using this thinner brush. And because it's a second layer and I'm applying what's called wet on dry, it is going to give it a slightly darker look. And that's what I want, because I want some of these shadows being cast um, on the petals to have that darker look. So painting those two layers will help to give the petals depth but also as you can see from the reference photo that I'm using here there are some highlights on the leaves and what I'm trying to do here is add a highlight afterwards so I haven't left the paper white so what I'm doing is I'm using some clean water on a brush and I'm applying that clean water right on top of the paint rubbing it up and down to blend the clean water with the color that's already on the surface of the paper and then I'm just blotting it with a piece of clean tissue paper and what that gives you as you can see is a very very soft highlight not a bright white highlight like some of the ones that I've left on the on the tips of the the kind of white petals but a much softer highlight along the edge of this uh, yellow petal and at this point I was missing the green markers a little bit wanted to use a bit of green so I decided to do the stem which is obviously holding up um, the flower uh, letting it bloom and for this I just used three colors I just used a spring green fern green and viridian um, pop the three markers on and then just use the small size 4 round brush to just blend them together. Um, once I got a base color blended together I take the brush, I dip it in the clean water jar and I wipe it on some tissue and then I can apply that highlight that you just see me do there, basically taking the color off um, to make that highlight. Then I just use exactly the same colors to do the next part along that's not adjacent to the one that I've just done basically doing that so that they won't run together when I've got them um, all kind of flooded and wet with the color. And here you can see me blending from my lightest color um, through my medium color into my darkest color last. Uh, and that's basically just a way for me to make sure that the, the side that's facing the light stays light and I work up and into the darkest color. Now I've got the base color established and also the second layer idea, the details with the fine brush. I can apply those two techniques to all of the other remaining petals. So here you can see me adding wisteria and granite, a um, little bit of yellow at the bottom there, and then getting the size 4 round brush and blending those colors together, leaving a sort of light edge, blending back towards the darkest color, the granite, and then I go in from the right hand side and do the same. Working in from the left and then the right hand side towards your colors in the middle is a good way of keeping that color in the middle quite dark, almost making a, a um, not a line with it, but a, a kind of a dark patch without it getting too diluted. I always keep a spare bit of tissue paper handy for blotting just in case I've overworked something and there's too much of a dark color. That little bit of tissue paper there can help um, put the highlight back in. So here you can see me adding more base colors and working them with the brush and working them sort of down around the edges of that petal. Uh, and then I sort of jump over to this other yellow petal uh, that you can just about see beside, be, behind this white petal and I'm working that with the sunburst yellow and the fern green again and it might seem like a strange approach I sort of jump around the picture a little bit and do little bits here and there but I am sort of trying to work from left to right um, <laughs> here we go this is a third layer so this is where I think that some of the second layer bits are not dark enough haven't got enough shadow and you can see me adding some extra shadow to these um, petals just to make sure that that looks it's got more depth uh, and hopefully you're going to get a feeling that some of those petals are popping out towards us uh, and some are receding into the background and it's all to do with where I'm putting these dark um, strokes of the brush so this is third layer and in some cases like the petal I just saw me using that was a second layer but this is definitely a third layer this one's got one two and this is a third layer of color going on and if I don't work it too much with the brush it won't blend with the color underneath which is what sometimes can happen with watercolors you've got to be quick you've got to be kind of fresh with it so it, it stays on the surface and acts as a third layer and now I'm adding um, second layer shadows to this petal where I just put on the base colors earlier. And you can see me using the fine brush now to try and put in some of those very, very fine grooved kind of lines, little kind of veiny lines that grow from the stem outwards and upwards into the, the petal and then sort of outwards towards its very edges. Uh, so it's just a few in there just to kind of suggest that that's what's happening and also those little detail lines just give the leaf a slightly different look. It, it, it doesn't just look like patches um, of, of color 
patches of the wisteria and granite. It's, it's got some kind of detail now breaking it up, and that's what I'm doing here on this left-hand side as well, which is a lot more shadowed. Um, but I'm trying to put in these very, very fine kind of veiny kind of lines using this very, very fine brush. I couldn't have done these with the size 4. This really fine brush is the only one that I could have used to get them that fine. So with half the flower basically painted now with a couple of layers of, of colour, I decided to finish off the um, stem and add a little bit more of, of the, the greens that I was using earlier. So you've got your spring, your fern, your viridian green, and then blended together, um, making sure that the, the parts either side of it, the left and right uh, side of it, had dried. Now here, what happened earlier, you can see me pointing out that when I was mixing some of the colours on the palette earlier, I flicked the brush and you got some little spots in there. And this is just a little bit of correcting mistakes. And it's quite simple. You get a brush with clean water on it and then you just work it over and you rub it over the sort of speckles, the little splats that you've got, blend it in together and then just blot it with the tissue. Um, it can also be used, as you can see me doing here, to add some very, very light highlights to um, that yellow petal as well, which is behind the white one. Now the white petals are casting uh, a shadow onto the green stem, so even though I've put in my base colors on the green stem, now's a chance to add a little bit of um, fern green and viridian together and to mix up with the fine brush, the, the triple one brush, and to put a little bit of shading to some darker colored green as shadow on the um, underneath of the stem, where, where those petals are sort of growing outwards and they're gonna cast a shadow and also the light source is coming in from the left hand side so I've got to make sure that the right hand side of the stem has got a quite a strong bit of shadow on it and I use the the brush here to also put in a few little fine lines um, they are present on the reference photo but kind of in hindsight well I've got fine lines on the petals so maybe I should have just kept the stem a little bit more kind of basic flat colors and, and not put in those detailed kind of groove lines on there it's just one of the things you think in hindsight. So at this point, I'm thinking, right, I want to know what the background's going to look like. Um, how will it affect my petals? So I start throwing in some you know, rough colors in the background. Fern green, viridian, really nice and loose, not too fussy. Uh, even a bit of granite in this top corner here because this is a, quite dark on the photo. And also I want the background to be very, very dark so that it contrasts with the lightness of the petals. Because even though this is a white iris at the moment, I've used so much wisteria and granite, the petals are looking more like a kind of a pale grey um, iris than maybe a white one. And I think I might have made a bit of a mistake here as well, because I use a very, very fine brush here, a small brush, uh, which is terrific for doing these quite delicate and difficult to do edges of the, the petals. But it's quite a large area in the background that I've got to work on, and a small brush isn't so good for that. Because I'm doing the background in bit of patches, what I have to do is kind of fade out its edge so I don't get a hard drying line there from the color. So what you can see me doing there is using the brush just to fade out and blend in that edge of color so it gradually fades to white paper. So down in the bottom corner, I use exactly the same kind of colors. I, I slap on a load of fern green and some viridian uh, and then get the brush in and work it around in the same way. Now on the photo, the, the bottom half of, of the background is a lighter green. So that's what I was trying to do here using a little bit less viridian, but it really didn't look like the way that it looked. So I was thinking, don't like the background. It's too much of kind of one color. I need to do something to give it a bit of a different look. Um, so. I figure, right, I'm going to, you know, in this section here, I'm going to experiment. So I'm going to put on a bunch of fern green here and then um, add some viridian, some dark bits to almost be like kind of reeds or, or grasses in the background. So it gives a bit of movement to the background instead of it just being a flat color. Notice here that I switched to a much bigger, fatter brush. This is a size eight round. Uh, and the benefit of this is I'll be able to load it with a lot more water for what I'm going to try and do here. Um, the disadvantage is it might be a little bit tricky to do some of those detailed edges and get them as, as nice and crisp as I want to because it's such a big fat brush. But what I do is I load it with loads of water and then I work that water around on the already wet color that I'm, I've got on there. And basically what I'm trying to do is create kind of backgrounds or backwashes where you, you drop in a load of nice clean water on top of your color and it spreads outwards and pushes the color around. So it gives you a slightly more blotchy uh, kind of look to your background, which is what I was trying to achieve here. So I'd have the look of kind of these dark green grasses and then blotchy color around them. 
So I've shown you all the techniques that I was going to use over the entire painting. So now I can speed it up uh, and do a little bit of time lapse as I tackle the rest of the petals and the rest of the background because I've got my techniques down. I know about using the layers. So here you can see me putting in a uh, first layer of color using again just wisteria and granite on this particular petal and adding some slightly more shadowed areas as well uh, before I then go on and start working into the petal next to it. Uh, and this one is again another long sort of like um, opening petal and here I use a little bit of the um, tissue just to blot it so that it's dark at the bottom, dark at the top and, and pale in the middle which is catching the most light. So again I'm just laying down base layers of color on the all three of these petals uh, and then I'm going to go back in and I'm going to mix up a second layer and put in some of the darker shadows which is what you can see me doing now. So that's just trying to add a little bit of depth and, and detail now by using uh, mixed on a palette the second layer. And I think I do a much better job doing the fine lines on that petal than I did over on the left hand side. I don't know why, it's just a bit more experience. It just seemed to um, flow better with the brush on that one. So just adding some extra little bits of, of both um, the, the first layer and second layer, showing a little bit of the yellow petal as well reflected by using the sunburst yellow, just tiny little bits there. And I'm also adding some second layer and also little bits of third layer um, shadows and details on a couple of these petals here. Just some extra fine lines on that one. And then I've got to start putting in the yellow and the green on this yellow petal underneath. Uh, and so I'm just using yellow and fern green, little bit of tangerine there just for a little bit of the orange bit near the top. And I even pop in some of those tiny little veiny lines in green on there before I start doing the background. And I'm happy with the background now that I've got an idea, now I've got an approach. So you can see I'm just slapping on fern green really rough, putting in some uh, strong, bold, kind of straggly lines of, of viridian, and then just blending them all together with that kind of um, splashy kind of backwash using the big brush and letting those colors just run around and, and kind of fade out, do their own thing. So that's pretty much the finished painting. I might tweak some of the shadows a little bit. Um, but I've shared quite a few little techniques and ideas in this video, so please let me know in the comments below if you found them useful or helpful, and check some of the links for some of my previous flower painting videos.